Hey everyone, this is Rachel, and today I'm here with a new scrapbooking process video. Thanks so much for joining me here, and I hope you enjoy. If you could flick me a thumbs up, that would be super awesome, and I would love it if you would become a subscriber. You can also click on the notification bell so you always know when I have a new video up. All right, folks, let's get going. Hey everyone, and welcome to the March 2020 For the Love of Homemade Kits Kit Share. I am here with the recipe for March. I'm going to deviate slightly just due to the fact that in here it has some stuff that is supposed to gear you towards doing spring layouts. Aha, uh -huh, obviously, because here in the U.S. we are coming about coming upon spring. However, I am a member of design team and I knew uh, that we'd be getting a spring themed kit for that. And I knew I was not going to want to make all of my layouts for an entire month about one season or events that occur in one season. So it made more sense to me to go less spring and more... I wouldn't necessarily say fall, but definitely more muted colors. It just worked for me. So that being said, so this month I decided to go buy this. A recent or new paper purchase. That's the first piece of paper on our recipe. And for me, I haven't purchased anything since October 2019. I was just trying to work from my stash rather than adding a ton of stuff to it. I have recently made a couple of purchases, but it was all non-consumable besides one pack of um, dimensional title words. Uh, basically, it's Simple Stories, new version of a thicker, but obviously a thicker is American Crafts. So I did buy that. Other than that, all I've bought were uh, mixed media mat, um, some stencils, and some mixed media texture paste or texture glaze. So I'm trying to keep my consumable purchases down to a bare minimum. So when it said a recent or new paper purchase, even though I had to go back to October, it really is the most recent purchase I had. So I decided to go with this one here. It is from the Lost in Neverland collection by Echo Park Paper. It is called Straight On Till Morning, and I just adore these stars. So this nighttime is the background, but this is what I chose this paper for when I purchased it. So because I chose this, another one of the items on the list is spring-themed embellishments. This color palette doesn't necessarily go towards spring-themed, and since I was pretty sure my scrapbooking store kit um, would be spring-themed, and I was correct, <laughs> I decided rather than spring, I would pull more either neutral or fall-winter things just to go with the greens and the golds and the reds uh, of this particular color palette. So next on the list is a tiny print or pattern. So I very, I took the easy way out because that's like the best thing for me to choose from. And I just chose the other two pieces of paper I have from Lost in Neverland. So I purchased all three of these together. One is called four by six journaling cards and one is called three by four journaling cards. And obviously on the other side, that's what they have. But once again, I chose it for this side um, because I basically wanted something to go with the star paper to be backup patterns. All right, I did choose one other small print, and this is actually from my one-offs bag, and this is from One Little Bird, Jasmine Jones for Studio Calico. And I like the way it went with the gold stars. I don't necessarily think I would use all of these together, um, but I thought it went well. This is the other side, but I don't have a plan to use that. I just liked this mustardy color. Next is an ombre style paper. Now I did have a harder time finding this simply because in this color palette, I didn't have a lot of ombres. Um, I had a lot of pinks and purples and blues and aquas in ombres, but not in 
a green or yellow or navy. I did finally stumble upon this one, which is a green ombre. Now, once again, I don't know if I would end up using it with this particular piece of paper, but um, the other ones it might. Now, this is from Pink Paisley Cedar Lane. I, um, I was basically just looking through all of my paper and when I looked through that, I went, oh, look, it's a green one. And it does go with the green in the um, the stars. So I was happy about that. Oh, I missed one. I did also pull out this for tiny print. This is from Crate Paper All Heart. And I picked it for this side. Now, it's got some pink in there. But if you see, these two actually go pretty well together. Because this is not a pink and a cream. I'm sorry, a yellow and a cream. It's actually a yellow and a, a very bl blushy pink. So it actually goes quite, these two actually go quite well together. So I thought that would just be another choice. Then we have a bowl pattern paper and I chose two. First one I chose is this one by Chamel for field trip and both the A side and the B side are bold. It has that um, green that is in this as well as the stars. And whenever I think of stars, I often do think of Chamel and uh, this pattern, this green pattern paper, wow. I didn't mean to say green, I meant to say arrow pattern paper works as well. And then the other one I chose was this one. This is an October afternoon from, it's called Shipwreck Coast. It is from Treasure Map, that's what it's called. And I chose it for this one. I just thought when you say bold, this goes, it's got that navy blue. It does have a teal that isn't necessarily in everything else, but it doesn't necessarily clash, especially to be honest, these three go together in my brain and then having these. And not everything is going to go with everything in your kit and that's totally fine. And then the last piece of paper is a specialty paper vellum, acetate, etc. So I chose this star pattern paper from Studio Calico. It made sense to me to go with the star theme since there's already another star paper on there. I love this paper. I've been hoarding it, I'll be totally honest, but I thought, you know what? It is time to use it. So I'm gonna put this to the bottom because it's gonna have a lot of glare on it. So hopefully you can see it without the shininess of the paper getting in the way. All right, now let's talk about embellishments. The first thing on the embellishments are roller stamps. So I have mm, probably a dozen or so roller stamps and I never use them. So I picked out three. One is a Dear Lizzie, one is a Chamel, and one is Seven Paper, which was kind of a shoot off of Studio Calico for a while. I did at some point use these tags to um, stamp out everything. So I have the one for Dear Lizzie. I have the one for Seven Paper. And then I also have the one for Chamel. So these three, and then I'll be able to use that to uh, figure out what stamp I want to use. Next on the list was chipboard. So where did my chipboard go? So I have in here actually both my chipboard and my wood veneer, which is also on this list. I have a small four by six iris container filled with chipboard that's just random. Either it's from lines I no longer have any paper for, or it came randomly in a grab bag or a kit. I do have one, well, it's two, it's, um, you know, one, one piece inside the other of plain chipboard. The rest are from various lines. Some are basic gray, some are Studio Calico. These gold stars, they were actually, I had pulled those into my kit in January. I had white and silver and gold stars. I just have the gold stars left. They are from... I want to say freckled fawn, but not 100% on that, so don't quote me. I have some apples, I have some leaves, I have um, these chipboard, I'm oh, sorry, the apples and the leaves. I have some apples and some leaves and some arrow and some camera wood veneer, and then the, um, 
the foiled diamond and triangle pieces. Those are from Studio Calico. Whoo, words, yay. All right, clips of some kind. When I went to that Cedar Lane and found that green ombre paper, I remembered that I had these leaf clip, um, clips, paper clips. I'm looking for the word paper clips. Oh my goodness. All right. <laughs> so I pulled those in and as it was saying, spring themed embellishments, I did bring in one thing that's quote unquote spring themed. Once again, I had brought these pink paisley chipboard stickers in, uh, in the January kit and I'm bringing them back. They do have things about rain and rainbows and happy days. And it's a, like April showers, bring May flowers type of thing, spring type of thing. I was thinking, um, but other than that, the wood veneer I brought in was more fall. So that goes more with the, um, the colors of my papers. I also am bringing in these heart puffy stickers. Um, not necessarily spring themed, but color wise, they went pretty well. And then Once again, I'm going less spring themed and going more with what will work with my kit. So I pulled in these, sorry, my nephew came home. I've kind of lost track of what I was talking about, except that I know I was explaining that for my embellishments, rather than spring themed, I just kind of went with the colors that go with the papers I picked out. Now, also on there are punches and I picked three. I have this Martha Stewart heart confetti punch. I also am bringing in my Stampin' Up triple banner punch as well as my E-Cake Success notebook punch. These are three of my favorite punches and there are the ones I use most often, although I don't necessarily use punches all that often. So that's what's on the list for embellishments. For mixed media, there are two things. There are art crayons or gelatos. I have these Vicky Booten art crayons and I just selected a couple of the colors that go with the papers I have. I am not going to pull in any mists. If you watch my videos, you know I use mists on a regular basis. So I didn't necessarily feel I needed to pull them into this kit in order to remember to use them. Um, it's just one of those things I tend to use them anyway, so it wasn't necessary for me to use them, to bring them in. And then last is a the alphabets, and there is two of the choices. One, a fancy alphabet, example cursive or funky fun font, and then any style of black al alphabet. I was an elephant. <laughs> so I'm bringing in quite a few for a particular reason. One on one of the alphabets, I don't actually have a lot. And then um, some of them are words and also have chipboard embellishments. So I have this one, which is from, I got it in a grab bag or a swap or something like that. I didn't purchase it from a store, so I don't know where it's actually from. And it has cursive words, but it also has stars and hearts in chipboard as well. So I thought that worked well both for title work as well as for embellishments. I then pulled in this one called Hazel from Pebbles. I don't have a lot of this left. I've used quite a bit of it. You'll excuse Ms. Anthony, she's making noise in the background. So I don't know how much I'm going to be able to use this, but I thought I should give it a shot to be able to use it in this kit. I'm also pulling in these black cursive smaller ones from Freckled Fawn, and this is Jen Scow's handwriting. She did that for them. I have it in multiple sets and multiple colors. You'll see there's more than one set in here. I also have it in white. I then pulled in these. These are also from Pebbles. They are black cursive foam words. I thought they may work. Um, also, I only have this part I used up the other side, so I don't have any more of these. And then I also pulled in these um, chipboard thickers 
called Good Tidings. They originally came out with a Christmas line. These are pretty old. Let's see. Do they say? 2013. So I bought these for the first time I did is uh, did a December daily in 2013. And then I'm also pulling in these together ones as uh, the any style of black beyond the cursive and the fancy. Um, so that is my March 2020 for the love of homemade kits kit. Like I said, not spring themed, but I definitely um, think it will work. Now, there are five Mondays in March. I will not be putting out five uh, layout videos. I will most likely just do four. And then that final Monday, I will do my layout share, what's left in my kit, rather than doing five complete layouts and then doing that. And that's just because of time commitments. I am going to a crop that last weekend in March, and I most likely am just not going to have enough time to do another layout. All right, so thank you guys so much for watching me. Don't forget in the description box below, because I think I forgot to say this at the beginning, but in the description box below, there is a link to the March playlist for all of the YouTubers who are uh, making kits for March, making layouts for March. All of those layouts will be in, all of those videos will be in the playlist. So make sure you head on down to the description box and check that out. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If you could flick me a thumbs up for this really randomly voiced over uh, video, I would surely appreciate it. I promise I'm not usually this scattered. I'm just having a day apparently. All right, everyone. Thanks so much. Bye.